How are you all? How are you all doing? It's 5.30 a.m. in India and 8 p.m. in New York. So yeah, we are facing some Indian guests to be a little late. Let's wait for them. Let me invite the guests for the day. Hey, hi, hi Lana. Hi. hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah it's absolutely fine. So guys, welcome to Dr. Anushruti show where we discuss health and wellness. And today we have Lara Heyman with us, who herself is a physical therapist and lives in the United States of America. Lara, we're happy to have you today with us. How are you and how's the situation over there at your place? It's really good. I was just telling you ahead of time that um, it's there's we have a heavy storm right now. So I'm hoping my Wi-Fi will stick with me, but all is good. All is very good. Thank you for having me on here. It's a pleasure for us. And how is the situation of COVID over there? Like, are the cases declining or increasing? Uh, no, they're really, we're doing very well in the United States. Thank goodness. Um, I think over 50% of the people are vaccinated. And we now can go around without masks. Um, I mean, if you're not vaccinated, you're asked to still wear a mask, but it's much better. It's on the upward slope. I know it's been troubling for you all in India, and I'm sorry about all yeah. that you've been through recently. Yeah, that, that's so great to hear that New York or basically the United States of America is in the upward direction related to COVID. And I wish good luck to you and your country for this. And Thank yeah, you. we all are together in this, all the countries, the world is together in this. So looking forward. The la coronavirus has almost destroyed people's life, health, fitness. You know, I really don't need to tell or cite what exactly we have lost to COVID. But today, I want to make people aware about the role of physiotherapy in Corona age. Because I feel this is a very important topic that needs to be spread. What do you think about it? Yes, I mean, fortunately, I've been able to see a lot of people um, over the past year virtually. And I have tended to do a lot of virtual because I get people in all around the world who want to work with me and they can't come and work with me in person. So... I'm very used to working virtually, being able to observe the body, observe um, the movement patterns. You know, somebody will tell me they have, you know, MRIs and all these things. And I, it's not that I'm not interested in that, but that is often just a piece. You know, I don't look, I look at how they're moving. I, I'm much more concerned about how the diagnosis is affecting their movement, how it's affecting their lifestyle. So what I often will tell them, and a lot of people are scared because they get a diagnosis and they kind of um, get attached to that diagnosis and get fearful. And so the, the thing I've done pre-COVID, but especially over COVID since I have been seeing people virtually, I've just started seeing people in person um, in the last two weeks. But um, okay. what I what I tell them is there you're going to be okay. Like don't um, the body is very resilient. A lot of the issues I see, the injuries, the 
um, repetitive injury type things, even something like a, a disc herniation that came from some kind of imbalance in the body. So what I'm really interested in is educating people on how to better move and to believe that they can move better. So a lot of it is empowerment. Um, our system in the United States, our modern medical model here doesn't always serve that. It looks at the separate parts of the body. You have a shoulder injury, you have a hip injury, you have a spine injury. And I look at the whole system because it's all related. You know, how you stand yeah. and how you sit, absolutely um, From the gait cycle to the posture, everything is really important. Everything. So I look at all of that. Even if I, you know, I had a private client a few weeks ago who wanted to work on her shoulder range of motion. And I saw her and it was, you know, it was coming from her pelvis. But she had seen a bunch of people in person. They were like trying to get her a bit more range of motion. And she wasn't able to get that until her pelvis, the bowl of the pelvis was in neutral. And we made huge strides in just one session. We've had a few other sessions since then. And like, it's night and day. And so, so much of it is observing and really understanding biomechanics and the body. And so um, my, my background ha helps me a lot with that. Yeah, I really feel that this is what exactly a physical therapist, you know, is supposed to do. Like, make to meet people aware and believe that they can walk, they can have a good posture, or they can get back to into their life they were previously living. Most of them suffer from the gait. In normal language, the moving condition, their posture, their strength, their ability to move their bruises. Yeah, that's absolutely great. And I'm really impressed and happy that how you treat your patients and deal with them. Thank you. Well, coming to coronavirus, uh, nowadays, people from all around the corner of the globe or all walks of life are indulging work from home. It is the new normal, by the way, work from home. Yes. So it usually requires a screen, maybe a laptop, a mobile or something. We have noticed a bad posture, you know, cervical pain, thoracic pain or something. So what do you think? Like, I feel... Physical therapists here play a very important role. Very important. And that's the first thing I'll go through with people is not just the exercises or the movement patterns that I'm going to um, review with them, but also what are they doing in their daily life? You know, that has a lot more, even the people that practice yoga with me, um, you know, if they're just practicing for an hour on the mat, that is does something for sure, but it's not going to do much if you go back and you sit at your desk like this. Um, so I really go over like what is good sitting um, kind of hygiene, so to speak. Sitting is not a terrible thing. It's that if you sit in one position for too long. So I just talk through ideas with people, how to set up their screen. Like I have my phone set up that it's at eye level right now. I'm not looking down because any kind of looking down is going to protract the skull forward and then all these upper cervical extensors continue to get really, really restricted and tight. So I go over all of that, you know, how to sit tall with a neutral spine, with a neutral pelvis, their feet on the floor, not kind of stretched out, ankles crossed and all that. And then moving from that seated position putting a timer on their phone, making a sticky note. I don't know if that's something you have there. It's like the little sticky notes, something yeah, that is we, a... we do have. Yeah. We do have colorful sticky notes, yeah. Yeah, some kind of reminder because we get very engaged in what we're doing and two hours can pass. And then all of a sudden we are like, oh my gosh, everything is hurting. And if you have those little reminders that, hey, every 40 minutes your timer should go off or you should look at your sticky note and hey, are you in your upright position? Have you gotten up and um, stood up and, and moved a little bit in a variety of ways? Because if we're positioned in a flexed manner where our hips are flexed, our spine is flexed, we have to counter that. Of course, it's better to not sit in a flexed position, but um, it's, so all those are reminders I, I review with people. Some people have a standing desk and they think that's great. I just had a client yesterday 
She said her pain hasn't <laughs> yeah. gone away with a standing desk. I said, well, the issue is if you take your posture and you stand with it, you're going to still have those imbalances. So it's not going to take the imbalances away. The only way you can improve it is become aware of it. It, it needs to become a habit. The way that we um, are aware of how we're holding our body has got to be a habit. We can't space out for a couple of hours and then expect that, you know, our body's just going to be okay. It's, it's often not. It's going to come to gravity, um, to the screens in front of us. So with laptops, I say try and get your laptop so it's even with your eye level. Get a wireless keyboard because if you have the laptop high but you're going like that, you're going to injure, you know, you could um, get some injuries in your wrist and forearm. So you have to set the whole body up for the best experience. Because we, you know, it's, you can't tell somebody not to sit and work. That's, like you said, everybody's working from home. How to best do that um, is make sure you're kind of doing the same things you would do in a work environment. Probably in a work environment, you are getting up, you're going to the bathroom, you're going to talk to somebody, you're walking into a meeting. So I also in say, nutshell, stay, yeah. In a nutshell, you mean to say that breaks are important and breaks are important to make people aware or alarm that you need a break or you need to correct your posture. Isn't yes, it? and I a tell people really also important. um drink a lot of water because then you'll have to get up and go to the bathroom, right? And it's great to yeah. be hydrated anyway. Your your body needs water. We're we're seventy eight percent water and our joints and our fascia um move better. We we feel more mobile when we're hydrated. That's why when we get up in the morning we tend to be stiffer because we've been, you know, in one position for a long time and the joints have kind of gotten a little bit drier. So we just feel stiffer. So it can be the same way if you're sitting. So drink a lot of water, put a timer on, make sure that you set your desk up for the best ergonomics. It's really easy to do. You don't necessarily even have to buy anything. You can put books underneath your laptop. Um, the main you thing I would say people purchase is a wireless keyboard. Yeah. As you say, it is all about making people aware. Even I'm trying, we both are actually trying today itself to make people aware about a correct posture, their balance on body, and everything and how physical therapists play an important role in their life, especially in COVID. So yeah, we are trying to make people aware. And I request the audience to ask your questions, but please be relevant and stick to the topic that is role of physiotherapy in Corona age. We will be happy to answer you guys. And yes, yeah. Everyone's still joining in. That's great. Everyone's joining and saying hi. But if you have any questions about um, physical therapy or biomechanics yeah. or um, how to, you know, like Balance say you've, ha say you've had COVID. Right. I have also treated people who've had COVID. And, you know, often they recover well, but for a while their endurance might not be great. Um, you really need to open up the chest open up so you're breathing better and you're giving your lungs a chance to heal since COVID has such a direct impact in your pulmonary system. Um, and work on your endurance that often is impacted as well. So it might not, you might not be able to go back to working out in the same way, but you, you know, to me, moving five minutes, 10 minutes every hour is is superior to waiting all day and then moving for 60 minutes. It's mm -hmm. the regularity of movement that the, that the body and motion really Motion is needs. really important. Yeah. Motion is something, you know, active motion. There should be motion in everyone's body. Now with this, I am coming to the next question or the next topic, that is immunity. Everyone's talking about immunity, COVID, coronavirus, everything's all about a good immunity. So do you think Physical therapy or physiotherapy really helps in building immunity. Like, how well, it certainly it can if we address it. Um, when we address the factors that improve immunity, first of all, movement does. Your lymphatic system, which is the largest system in your body responsible for mm. immunity, yeah. um, has a one-way valve. It 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 works because we move. So it's it's a we have to think of it like a a, a water. 
um, filtration system that needs that recycling of it, that needs the movement for it to work. So um, movement is huge, whether, you ha whether you're trying to avoid COVID, whether you're trying to um, get better after COVID, and, and even going forward for other, other sources of um, immunity, we need, we need to keep moving. We need to drink a lot of water. Obviously, um, you know, hygiene is important, and I always go over that as well, but um, the movement is huge because our lymphatic system um, is, is like, you know, it's, they're pipe, it's piping throughout your body. You know all this, and so um, movement is really what gets your lymphatic system working well and helping you clear out, um, clear out the toxins that our body is always dealing with, whether it's COVID or anything else. We have lots of um, foreign substances that we're inhaling that are on our skin and our body yeah. is so brilliant at being able to um, move that. It really out. Yeah, move it through and out. And one way to help that is movement. It's it, That's why we feel so good. We think, oh, it's the sweat. Well, yeah, it's the sweat, but it's the movement. It's getting the lymphatic yeah. system. You know, if you've sat on a plane for a while, you know how um, everything feels swollen. And that's again, because your lymphatic system, you haven't been moving. So everything's kind of clogged up. And the best thing to do after getting off of an airplane as much as you might feel fatigued is to get moving it could be just take a long walk it doesn't have to be super vigorous but just get the body moving get the blood pumping get the lymphatic system going with this uh, as we are talking about motion movement i come to a point that in india we're in india or in many other places as well people are still in lockdown they're still under lockdown and they can't go out or anything so you know might be they would be having a question that how to maintain this motion but i feel even yeah. going to the kitchen to the bathroom moving the whole lawn is itself a motion but still you know for a normal person it is very important to tell that how to maintain motion in their life even during lockdown i mean that's a great question um, people have limited space. People have other people living in their homes. So they literally have uh, obstacles. And so I think the best thing to do is make movement part of the recipe. Um, it, you don't have to go in one direction like you're walking. We actually should move in a variety of directions. You could put on music and dance. That doesn't take a lot of space. You're moving your whole body. You're hearing music. It's inspiring. Um, there's lots of ways of getting movement in that doesn't take um, much space at all. It's the hardest thing is when we are in lockdown, when we're sitting, when we're not in motion, it's Newton's law. Things and things at rest want to stay at rest. So it's like overcoming the inertia, the feeling of you've been sitting for six hours why are you tired? You've done nothing, right? It's because your body is sensing, oh, am I supposed to be resting now? The energy goes down. You have to kind of almost get that energy going. Once you start moving, so I tell people like put on one song, like have a playlist. Um, I tell people, my, my clients, my yoga clients, I said, have a playlist, like your feel good playlist that no matter what mood you're in, you put it on. And the reason why that's important, that kind of regularity of recognizing not just a random song, is that your brain recognizes it. And when you hear it, you remember, before even moving, the feeling it gives you. And that's called a habit loop. So, so that these our are, body does not resist to dance over it. Exactly. You hear it, the music and you're just like, um, you go from zero to 60, right? You go into it and so have a playlist. It's like put your favorite dance songs on this playlist and have it there available, especially when you're feeling low on energy. You've got to move every day. I mean, I know people that have this, that, that playlist I recommended to them a few years ago, and I'll see them kind of for check-ins, and they're like, I use that playlist almost daily. And um, especially now in COVID, if people are not able to get out and move around, if you are in lockdown, get music because we need also some celebration our memory of you know we have as humans we have been dancing 
since the since we began you know it's a way of of expressing spirit expressing yeah yeah it's a way of expressing it i really feel it is the most enjoyable and uh, most I means this is the most trending or trendy way of having motion in one's body and even in india you know people are almost into dance be it weddings or be it birthdays celebrations they are all into the dance so yeah this is a nice trick nice way to keep the body in motion activeness despite being in lockdown yes with this uh, moving ahead now in india uh, when i'm citing ones that we are in lockdown there is in many other countries as well there are several pregnant women who cannot go out fear of covid or the virus how to provide them in antenatal physiotherapy antenatal physiotherapy is really important and they all are missing out on it yes that's a great question um actually on my online platform i just created a postnatal series um but it really like i look at postnatal as the kind of last part of the journey of prenatal and the biggest thing um for anyone who's pregnant is to realize this is not a disability right you actually have yeah. an imperative to stay strong not only for the actual birthing process where you want to feel like you have good strength you have good mobility but also for the recovery um because there's a lot of shifts that happen when women are pregnant um we gain weight it might not all be weight as uh, um associated with the baby and um so we want to make sure we're staying you know we're really moving and 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 staying energized it's good for the baby it's good for us and um we're going to need all of our strength after the baby is born so for yeah. for women um that are have in prenatal what i recommend for them is keep moving if you haven't done a lot before you got pregnant um keep to basic exercises that are going to continue to strengthen you this is not the time to start off something really new because there's things that you have to just be aware of it's not a concern but just more of a you know your ligaments are going to be more lax your heart rate in the third trimester is going to it's going to elevate quicker you have a lot more blood in your system that third trimester um so you need to watch how high your heart rate gets that doesn't mean you shouldn't get it up but just be aware of that the biggest thing i would say for anyone who is in lockdown who is pregnant is continue to move and continue to feel strong that is really important for your spirit too um because you could just go and kind of hibernate and grow this baby and it's really it's not good for your pelvic floor um in the recovery if you have not remained strong you're going to have um more likely to have issues um any kind of pelvic floor dysfunction if you haven't maintained some of that core stability the hip mobility and the hip strength and then the the posture you know as as the uterus grows um everybody thinks it goes into your low back i mean into your your pelvis is tilting but it really goes into the lower thoracic spine that's where a lot of um women in their third trimester start to hinge there so doing things like mobilizing the spine getting on a exercise ball if you have that if not get on all fours mobilize the spine so that area of the spine doesn't become so sore and rigid for you because it's it becomes a flex point and also that's really important for the, for the recovery because you kind of lived in that position for a while and after the baby comes out your brain still remembers oh i moved a lot in that upper lumbar lower thoracic spine and that's where a lot of um sacroiliac dysfunctions can occur because of that imbalance around the spine um so yeah just move and work on hip mobility nice squats um you can do push-ups on your knees modify do not feel like it's a disability actually being a strong mm -hmm. if you have nothing uh you know no precautions from your doctor continue to have your movement practice be really strong i really feel the husband or uh, the family plays an important role over here 
to help that woman be in motion even evening walks in the lawn in the nearby roads area is really helpful in women and as you said earlier they can have a baby playlist maybe song like even coco melon or anything whatever the baby needs to hear but yeah motion is all about we are talking that how much is it is important even for a pregnant woman or someone facing a work from home disabilities or anything clara physical therapy and respiratory care how are they connected physical therapy and what respiratory care respiratory, uh, respiratory care. care yes yeah so there are actually um specific physical therapy treatments for respiratory care um and so i mean that might be like if somebody had a really major um some lung issues or some um mucus and congestion in their lungs we can actually do um myofascial release percussion on the on the ribs i can teach somebody to do that if i'm not able to see them or touch them i can teach them how to do that but the biggest thing is to really teach good breathing techniques so many people have a very shallow breath it's mostly trapped in the upper um chest and that is um not good for exchange of oxygen and co2 and we really want to get the what's called a 360 degree breath if you think about the entire rib cage and breathing into all parts of it so if i was working with someone virtually i would have them really put their hands on their ribs put their hands on their back ribs put their hands on the sternum and the clavicle and direct the breath to those different areas to get more expansiveness and that can be so important for every everyone needs it honestly nobody is probably um taking a sufficient enough large breath um that's why a lot of times we end up if you end up feeling like you're sighing a lot or yawning a lot during the day um those are those are indicators that you're not getting enough you know you're really not breathing in the biggest capacity mm-hmm. so teaching that and the most important part of that is setting people's posture up you know if we're rounded forward we really are closing off our breath capacity if our head is forward we're probably getting some of those um secondary accessory muscles of respiration overly active and they're taking over and that gets a lot of that kind of kind of stressed out panting breathing and you know that can trigger that sympathetic nervous system which is part of the autonomic nervous system that is correlated with stress our fight or flight so breath and respiration are really important features for um posture postural training um for core training and then for also just making us feel better so if you again that's that whole if you're sitting for a long time not only are you not getting the lymphatic system moving and all that you're probably not breathing very well and that is fatiguing you know if we're not taking really good breaths we get tired and <laughs> indeed indeed that's absolutely true Laura, you are again and again talking about virtual classes, virtual therapy, and in the first question itself, I asked that everything's new normal, working from home. Do you feel that a uh, physical therapy given virtually, its name itself is physical therapy, that's being given virtually nowadays, has it affected the way of treatment? Like before, everywhere we used to give physical therapy to the patients in the center. in the houses but now but now it is being given on uh, online platforms zoom call whatsapp call so has it really affected the way of treatment i think it probably has for some people um i have been working privately with people for many many years um and so i am very accustomed again to working virtually and so i was really kind of covid ready i think other physical therapists who are only in the clinic this was a very big shift um because you know so much of what they we had to face a really big change on this it was like change. a miracle or something evolution for them to go on online rather physically yeah 
I mean, I look at it like this. Um, I think I inherited this from my father, who was always kind of like, oh, you know, it's different. It's not worse. It's, you know, who's to say which one is better? In some ways, it makes you become a better educator. You can't rely on, like, somebody being in front of you and imitating a move and then walking away and having them just repeat it, which is, unfortunately, what happens a lot in the clinic now because of insurance only reimburses a certain amount of money. More clients are seen per hour in most clinical settings, not all, but for the majority, just to be able to bring in enough income. And when that happens, you're seeing multiple people at a time. And so there is a lot of, hey, do this, watch for a moment, walk away. And in a way, I would say this is even better because we can't do that. We have to, it's focused attention. Um, it's focused education. I have to rely the on... The should be on the patient. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I say this with yoga. I say with PT, the number one the number one skill is observation. Obviously, really understanding the body so that you can convert what you're seeing into... I never say, this is that. What I say is, what I see, it, this is happening. I see that when you go to lean over you're rounding in your back. What does that tell me? That's a habit. You probably are an anterior tilted pelvis and restricted in your hip mobility. So your spine has become the place that you move from. So those are my um, conjectures. And then I move from there. So in a way, I think this has really called upon physical therapists who aren't doing that kind of education and it's not their fault necessarily. It's more the system has set up. They don't have the time to really give that one-on-one -on -one, um, attention. Interaction. Right. So I think in a lot of ways, this has actually improved that. There's obviously things we do with our hands manually, feedback with our hands. So I always tell people, hey, take your hands, put them here so you can feel that because that's where I might have my hands. I still might have them do it on themselves too because some people are not as um, comfortable being touched, but it's just, um, it's really learning and adapting. You know, I'm always saying, hey, oh, do you have a broomstick around or do you have this around? And it's just being able to think on your feet. The other aspect beyond being an ob observer is being a critical thinker. I mean, this is hugely important as a PT. That's why, again, I don't get attached to a diagnosis. If somebody brings me a diagnosis, I'm happy they were given that, but it, it's, it's a very small piece of the puzzle. I'm more interested in, well, why did this happen? Unless it was some acute injury, why, why is it like this, and how can I help it be better? The case study, the case history is also, play, uh, is also really important in this. What exactly has led to this pain or led to this deformity. Yes. And I think it's important to tell people these things too because people's expectations are kind of like, I'm going to go to PT and I'm going to get fixed. And I always say, yeah, even I am in not, one sitting. Right. I'm not going to fix have you. This belief. Yeah. Right. And that's that impatience. Like, it's like, take a pill, feel better. No, you have been moving this way for a long time, most likely. It is going to take some time for your brain and your body to coordinate a better movement pattern. I say, I just had a kid the other day. He's a uh, athlete, athlete. I work with a lot of athletes. And I said, you can imagine going from where we are now to the nearest coffee shop. We know how to get there. Your GPS would take you the shortest route. But what your brain is doing is getting you there, but taking you a much longer way. And that's the only GPS mapping it has. So we have to remap it so it goes in that short path, the most efficient, the most um, impactful for injury prevention and optimizing performance. That doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> you know, so um, what it I takes really time, huh? it will take time. It takes time. It does. But it's if it, you know, on the on the upside is no I I say that I mean um, unless you're dead in a coffin or wherever you lie dead, you are capable of change. So I'm always optimistic about 
anything being able to improve because I know it can, I know it can, but it does take time. It takes patience and that perseverance. Absolutely. Uh, you were talking about a kid that's eighty. So, with this, I just got a question: lockdown or coronavirus has affected children most. Not about the virus, but mentally, physically, all around, children have been affected the most. So, I have also noticed, you know, almost every house has a kid, and we have noticed the deformity in his balance, posture or their movement, you know, they stick to their video games, their social media sites. So how to compel them to come into motion? After all, motion is everything that is important. How to compel children to stay active even during this pandemic and, you know, have their body in motion? I mean, that's a great question. I have two children of my own and the first thing I would say is you have to model it. You know, we can't expect our children to do something that we are not doing. We can try and expect it, but it's not going to have much of the power um, if we're also doing it, if we're also taking care of ourselves, if we're also eating well, if we're also sleeping well, if we also are turning off our phone and not just carrying around all the time. Um, these are t This is tough when you're, you know, um, isolated in the house, but you kind of have to have that off switch. So for my kids, it could be that we're going to play a family game, which is not active, but it's something off the screen. It's like, you know, a word game or something, cards. Um, and a then the other thing, one. yeah, right. And, but I also, I get my kids dancing. We put on music, we dance, we make fun of each other. They, they make up something. Um, my son plays basketball, you know, um, it's hard playing basketball by yourself when you're used to playing with the team. And the other thing is just talking about it. Like, how are you doing? Like, is, this kind of stinks. I'm really sorry. You know, it's like acknowledging that it's different and it's hard because they're not in their normal setting. Um, and then just saying, hey, I know you have to be on Zoom all day at school. Why don't we turn the computer off and let's do blah, blah, blah. And, and the thing and is, indulging them into activities and being involved. We have to be them. involved in it because just imagine how hard it is as an adult when we're just feeling stagnant. The kids have much more of a reflex to be entertained by the screens. So we have to really pull them out of that and get involved and not just say, hey, go do some, you know, exercise, go do some jumping jacks, go. We have to kind of get involved with them. So in that way, I think it's, this is again, the positive. It's like we have more time with our kids. And so let's utilize some of that time and, and get them active as well. And I taught, you know, I set my kids up. Uh, they know about, you know, putting their um, screen at their eye level. I go through all that with them. I show them the problem with the text neck. Um, so yeah. their posture is actually quite good because they live with me and I talk about it all the time. But, you know, again, so I'm modeling. Is, yeah. 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 There is something that you, actually it's a benefit that you are over there with them. So you can guide them every time they're doing wrong or they're in the wrong position. But in a normal family where physical therapist or even a doctor is not there, it is quite difficult for them to guide their children or guide themselves to be in a good posture, you know? Even while reading a newspaper, their neck is bended or something, and there's someone needs, there's someone who can give them an alarm, a reality check that you are not in a good position, you need to get, get back yourselves. Yeah, and mostly kids are the most affected, as I said, because in India, we have a habit that in the evening around 5.30 or 6, kids move out of the house, in the streets, in the parks, gardens, they play. But nowadays, we all are missing that. Because of COVID, we can't see any of the kid over there in the ground, in the playgrounds or anything. But that's a good way you told that, uh, to indulge with them. After all, imposing is not a solution. I really feel imposing is not a solution. Unless you yourself are a part of it. La, one 
thing I want to tell you in Asia, maybe in your country as well, that in Asia we have seen people are having you know bloating of stomach coming out. Uh, like that's a random question, but yeah, everyone's facing that, and uh, be it a man or a woman, they are really focused on how to get a flat tummy, looking at videos. Arabics and whatnot, but how physical therapy or physical therapy is actually exercise. So, some tips for them for a flat tummy. Well, you know that is going to have a lot to do with several things. One is your posture, honestly, because again, if you're positioned where your pelvis is tilted, your abdominals, your abdominal wall is extended. I mean, so you can see people who are pretty trim and it looks like they have a little bit of a belly and that's actually because you tip the bowl of the pelvis, the abdominal contents have nowhere to go except forward. Now, the, also the issue with that is because of that tip, when they use their abdominals, they're not using the deepest abdominals, which really kind of hold the, the entire abdominal wall closer to the spine, giving you the look of a flatter stomach. So it's twofold. It's like, how are they, if they're working out, are they working those muscles effectively? Um, as I was saying, I work with athletes and I see a lot of them are very, very strong, but also in relationship to how strong they are overall, they're very weak in their core because they are, a lot of them have tipped pelvis, and they are working the rectus abdominis, the superficial muscle, and it becomes more poofed out. So that's one thing. The second thing is, like, what are you eating? <laughs> you know, I mean, really, at the yeah. end of the day, that if you're moving habit. well, you can exercise. But if you're eating garbage, you, you're going to feel, you could literally feel bloated. You could be bloated. Um, so I, there's certain things, um, you know, I'm not a dietitian. I am a um, natural food chef, and I have done a lot of my own research. Um, Amazing. We are just getting to know more about you as yeah. we move ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, I say, and, I, and it's Indi I have had Indian clients, and I do know this is a little bit of a stickier area because dairy is such a huge part of your culture. Mm. Um, dairy is very bloating. Um, it, so if somebody comes to me and they're like, I really want, you know, I've done everything and it's not about their posture and they're like, what about my eating? The first thing I'll tell them is get rid of dairy because, um, dairy being broken down, even if we have the enzymes to break down dairy, it still is very inflammatory. Um, we aren't baby cows, so we don't have that. Um, the same, we're not absorbing it in the same way. It's, it's a very condensed uh, protein. Casein is the animal protein in dairy. And, w and the process of breaking that down leads to a lot of um, gut biome stuff issues, a lot of bloating. If anybody has eczema, they have any skin issues, a lot of congestion. Um, I, had a, I had an Indian client who um, had a lot of bloating, and when I was doing some uh, myofascial work on here, it's I could literally feel, I can't really explain it, but bloating in her fascia, like it was yeah, just, she was bloated. Understand. And she asked me, I never, I never give advice unless someone says, Laura, please tell me what you think I should do. And what I say is, why don't you try this? You have to, and it has to work for you and your family. Anyway, she eliminated dairy within two days she wrote me she said I feel I can't even in two days she's like I feel so much better I was eating antacids all the time I had them in my car I had them by a bed I had no idea it was just a habit I always was bloated and eating these antacids she's like I haven't had them since I gave up the dairy two days ago um you know over six eight twelve weeks she lost weight she lost a lot of that inflammatory bloating um, is that going to be the case for everyone? No, but it's a very good place to start. It is, um, again, a really, really inflammatory This is bloating. something common in everyone. This is something common in everyone. So, yeah, they everyone. can work on it. Exactly, exactly. You can at least try and eliminate, but I mean, or, or decrease, 
but the best way to really um, try to see how your system, digestive system adapts is eliminate some of these more inflammatory, more um, alert allergen um, type foods. And dairy is, in my opinion, top on the list for that. Okay, that's great. I hope people listening to us right now, especially Asian people, or maybe they'll see the recording later. This is going to be a great help for them. But at the end, let's talk about something very important and general. That is, in this pandemic, we have seen and suffered the loss of good medical practitioners. At one hand, we are talking about a good physiotherapist, experienced physiotherapist, experienced medical practitioner, a doctor. And as we are looking at the evolution of viruses or diseases, we feel that how much a good medical practitioner is important. Now, while we are having coronavirus and everyone's at their home, medical education, actually every education, but especially medical education, which needs hospital visits, patients, training that's all being shifted on online training so do you feel this is a great loss for all over the world even after five years six years when this situation is repeated the medical practitioners the upcoming medical practitioners are in their online training do you feel that's a great loss for the world you know it's again i I want to try and look at the positive of it. Um, there could be some aspects of it that are equal, if not better. Um, there is nothing like training with people in front of you, you know, so that is a loss for sure. Um, because, you know, I know my own confidence in my ability to work with people comes from ha having seen thousands of bodies, you know, and that is just year after year, people, 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 lot of experience. Um, I don't know what that would be like if I had learned only on a virtu in a yeah. virtual way. It's, um, it is a loss for sure because, you know, there's a lot that happens too in a therapy session, in a, in a medical session with a doctor. There's emotions that come out. There's, um, there's all kinds of therapy, you know. I'm a physical therapist, but there's a lot of mental and emotional therapy that comes with that. And the human connection and human touch is so vital to for healing. Especially the relationship of a patient and a doctor is really, really important in treating a disease. Absolutely. I mean, I can't imagine just like having a real um, life-changing disease or disorder and having to just talk you know virtually about it um it would be hard because the other thing is there's um if you find a really good doctor going to the person's office there's a comfort in that you are feeling like you're in their environment the you're aura being is completely taken. Changed. yes exactly so i do wonder how that's going to be um i think the positive is we are super adaptable as humans, and we've only proven that this year. And um, again, I go back to my dad, who is a doctor, and you know he was so positive. And I remember my kids were um, with their cousins watching something on an iPad. I mean, this was over 10 years ago, and I was like, oh my gosh, we used to watch the same thing on one TV screen as a family. This is, I can't, they're all over doing different things. It's, and he goes, well, who's to say which is better? And, you know, I kind of think that that's adaptability. Like, my, you know, our lifestyle changes, um, what we're subjected to changes. And if we can keep the focus that we're really trying to improve and enhance people's health, and we'll do it in any way we can, and that might be virtual, and that means that we're going to have to be really good educators. Some doctors are not very good speakers. <laughs> They're not really good in person. They're not good in person. So maybe this is an opportunity for them to be better, you know, so that they can kind of put so on a little acting skills. skill and like get a little more, you know, you see a lot of uh, doctors. I mean, it's not just doctors, but that are just uh, 
kind of flat. And, and so it's an opportunity to, to try and um, level up knowing that we have, you know, it's kind of like we've taken away that human interaction. And so we're going to have to make up that gap somehow, which is going to have to be, we're going to have to be very, very educated, really good observers, really good listeners, and, um, and, and, and provide as much as we can that emotional support. A comfort is necessary while treating a patient, I feel it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I really feel that we have covered the most important topics of physiotherapy in Corona age. And uh, as I'm looking at the comments right here, people are really satisfied with our talk. And I hope you enjoyed the session today, Vera. I did. I so appreciate you um, getting up early to talk to me since it's later here. <laughs> yeah, um, I, it was almost such a everyone's still sleeping. <laughs> yeah, but so they can catch fine. it on the replay. They can catch it on the replay. Yes, so. absolutely. That is what I thought about it. That they can have a recorded version of this. Uh, physiotherapy over Zoom is absolutely not a good idea. Absolutely, we all were talking about this. Well, Lara, it was a great pleasure having you with us today, and I am looking forward to more such sessions because how long as we talk, it is still less, you know, to spread awareness, and I am really looking forward to have more such sessions with you. I do I hope love you that. enjoyed this. I would love that. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. And if anyone has any questions, they can comment on the video when they watch it, or they can come to my page and write a direct message to me there. And um, I try and answer all the questions that I can. So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a lovely Absolutely. Friday. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. See ya. Okay, guys, yeah. I'm ending the live session over here, and I do hope you enjoyed this. And uh, let's. Thanks, 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 everyone. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed the session. We are looking forward to more such sessions. It was great talking to you guys. Keep up with your good health, wear masks, and stay. Happy Friday. Stay safe. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care.